it's so fulfilling and uh, it's 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 such a nice warm feeling honestly because we know that at the end of the day every single touch point of ours is is directly impacting someone's life positively my day usually begins uh, um, I'm not a morning person uh, okay. I so I I stay up very late. Seven thirty is usually when my kids are going to school, and they're like, and you're a mom of I'm a mom of three. So it's really sweet because it begins with my two kids coming in, giving me a big hug and kiss, and saying, "Bye, mommy, we're going." So this wakes me up. So I, I usually get up with the, their hugs and kisses, which is nice. So at least by the time I wake up, the house is nice and quiet. Uh, but then all the, uh, you know, the day starts busy because by that time I'm just kind of catching. Uh, I start the day with just kind of making sure I rem rem remind myself, OK, what all am I doing for the day? What are the meetings which are scheduled? Things have changed so much in the last two years, right? So for me, it's a real hybrid uh, between online meetings because I manage a lot of the GCC business. So GCC business earlier when I was managing, it was more how do I go out there every two months, every three months? Uh, and how do I kind of be on the ground? Whereas that's completely shifted. So now I'm able to be in touch with them on a daily, weekly basis. I do have a nice um, variation of connecting with the teams which are remote, as well as uh, trying to be with the teams here. One of the nice things that's happened after COVID is now we go to them. We don't ask anyone to come to the corporate office anymore. We're like, we want to be again, closer to our people, closer to where the action is. It's a little bit more commute for me, but uh, what is nicer is I I'm closer to the teams in, the, in, in our own units. Internally, I probably have around four to five meetings in a day. And then I usually have three, four external meetings. So it's meeting with the key stakeholders. As a public company, we still have a lot of investors and those kind of stakeholders that you engage with. Uh, and then uh, some meaningful uh, doctor interactions, uh, senior doctors. Um, uh, so those are kind of the external facing meetings which happen and quite a few of them. Uh, I think one of the other interesting ones which has been coming more recently is with the shift we're trying to do with digital, there's a lot more conversation on what's happening in digital. And that involves meeting a whole lot of different set of stakeholders, which I probably would not have met uh, earlier. I try to sort of block meetings typically from uh, nine, nine-ish till around five o'clock. I try to then see how I can spend at least a couple of hours with the kids because the little one still goes to sleep at around 7.30 now. So that's my usual time to at least while he's there for dinner. So we try to do dinner together. It's becoming increasingly challenging to, again, to get my uh, teenage son there. He's like, mom, I'm not hungry. I'm like, yeah, you are, you're always hungry. <laughs> so that's a, that's a bit hard. And then I have my daughter. She's just eagerly waiting for dinner time because she likes that family time together. So I try to have sort of six to eight with the kids. Five, if meetings finish by the time I get around to them, it's around six. So a couple of hours with the kids and that's when after that is when I go to the gym. So I have early dinners. We eat at 6.30. So my gym is usually 8.30 or 9, which is, uh, which is not recommended. But I've, uh, I've realized that I need to do something that works for me. I've tried to do getting up at 6.30, 7, and then I'm like dead before the day even starts. So for me, I'm like, this works. And I've done this for so long uh, that I'm happy going at 8.30. I finish at 9.30, 10. And then I work a couple of hours after that. It helps me kind of reflect, think about what needs to be done, my prioritization. Um, and, and by that time, again, the whole world is a bit quieter. So it's easier for me to kind of distill and focus because you know, you're sitting with 500 emails in the inbox and I'm not going to be able to respond to 500, but at least how do I choose the 20 that I need to attend to? I typically have a three week schedule, which is kind of locked in. The couple of other responsibilities that I'm engaged with, I mean, I'm the chairperson for the YPO, the Y chapter for this year. Almost 100 CEOs in that group and we plan a learning calendar for a full year there. For me as, a, as the chair, I have, I meet every, once a month at least for the board. 
uh, I meet within my smaller group once a month as well. So that's two meetings right there. Uh, and then there are five to seven learning events that are happening every month. So it depends which ones relate to me and which ones I want to attend. I founded this group, the Dubai Healthcare Business Group, uh, which has representations from all the healthcare providers within uh, Dubai, uh, which represents almost 80% of this uh, market. And I'm the managing director uh, for that. So that also kind of uh, takes up a reasonable amount of time. Hence the three week planning becomes necessary. <laughs> then I became part of the World Economic Forum. I'm one of the young global leaders. So again, that's a community which I'm reasonably active in, again, or healthcare agendas, but more on a global basis, whereas the Dubai Healthcare Business Group is much more on a regional basis. I still work over the weekends. I enjoy, I mean, for me, work really, it, it drives me. So um, I, for me, it doesn't feel like working. I, but I do, I do uh, relax over the weekend. I have, I grew up here in Dubai. I have so many friends. I am uh, very active. Um, and this is a constant tussle I have with, uh, um, you know, with myself because the whole idea of how do I make sure that my involvement is strategic, uh, but also not just at a 30,000 feet, but also having the pulse on the ground. And that's something which I've learned very closely watching uh, the chairman and my father, uh, because it's not important just to kind of have an idea and a vision of what we want to do, but it's really about knowing what's happening on the ground and what the pulse on the ground is. And especially in this world, it's changing so quickly, uh, especially in healthcare, things are so dynamic. Uh, I think it's really important not just to kind of go on past trends, because that's what will happen when you end up being too far away from where the action is. At this point where, I, where I've been in, uh, where we're sitting at 35 years into the organization, we are, we are very well established, we're quite big. So it's really uh, very important to be able to strike that right balance, at least for me, what I try to do is make sure that I'm not micromanaging, but also I know what's happening so that I can make, uh, be more, aware about what are the best decisions to take depending on what's going on in the world and for the organization as we see how healthcare is evolving and how people's behaviors are changing. It's so fulfilling and uh, it's, it's, it's such a nice warm feeling honestly because we know that at the end of the day every single touch point of ours is, is directly impacting someone's life positively making them either cure uh, get better or stay well. So we feel very, very passionate about this cause and being able to be right there, uh, positively being able to touch someone's life. I'm a chartered accountant. Uh, so, you know, I used to try and make myself think, this is really nice. I'm making sure the health of the economy is good because I'm making sure that the health of the company is nice by all these balance sheets being audited well and uh, all the consulting work. Uh, but at the end of the day, it, it, for me personally, it wasn't fulfilling enough. Uh, I needed something which was much more powerful, which much more resonated with me. And I guess part of it was I grew up in this family where it was all about what can we do in this community how can we contribute? How can we serve? So I, uh, I, I for me, every morning, it's, it, it's, it's amazing waking up knowing that, hey, what can we do today? Uh, which means someone else will have a better day.